Hi, I'm Steve Deal. You're in my home gym here in Hilliard, Ohio, and I'm CFO of EliteFTS.com. I initially didn't have as much room as I have now, so I had to prioritize. What were the things that I needed? First and foremost is a three by three rack. We've got one in the back there and you can do pretty much everything that you need to do in that one rack. All you need are different bars and some different plates and you can train for competitions with nothing but a rack. Second thing that I wanted, because I'm a geared lifter, because I lift multiply and walking out weights gets pretty tough uh, as you're trying to max, maximize uh, your potential there, is I did invest in a monolith. Um, most people aren't gonna have that in their house. I have one just for myself because of multiply lifting, but even if you're not a multiply lifter, if you're a raw lifter, but you want to train with your family, or your spouse, or you want to have friends over, you want to actually have a training crew come over and lift. I, a monolift is great. It's all about the ability to adjust heights, and you can do tons of different movements out of it, and it makes life a lot easier than trying to, to move pins up and down in a rack. So that's why I thought a monolift was important. Um, the other, the probably two other pieces that I really wanted to get out of the gate was a glute ham raise. You can do tons of stuff there. Most lifters that you see that, that come into powerlifting are gonna have a weakness in their hamstrings. It's just the bodybuilder type uh, workouts that you see in magazines that most people go into commercial gyms and do over time aren't gonna work hamstrings. And that's a glaring weakness in a lot of people. That's why when you see people deadlift and they shake, you see people squat and they shake, a lot of times it's a weakness in their hamstrings. Can't get depth, it's a weakness in hamstrings. Glute ham raise is a perfect tool to raise that up. Plus you can do other things on it. You can do a lot of ab work. You can do a lot of lower back work. It's not just for hamstrings. The other was a high low pulley machine. Um, when you get into your accessory work, a lot of times you're beat or a lot of times you just need to hit things in certain angles. You can get either the plate loaded or the, or the selectorized. I got a selectorized and the plate loaded would work just fine. Uh, but it allows you to really hit the angles and work on weaknesses and do a lot of the specific movements to kind of build as your third, fourth, and fifth movements that you have in a training se session. So once you've got those basic needs met, let's say you do have some extra room or you're able to move into a little bit bigger space. So then you could start looking at, okay, what are, the, what are kind of those secondary machines or secondary pieces of equipment or even just how you lay things out? Um, so what I've done is I've set both racks over on one side of the, uh, one side of the basement because uh, that's where a lot of the heavy plate loading activity is going to happen. Uh, then on the other side, I've got a deadlift platform with some bumper plates, but also pulling in some dumbbells, some various bars, and pulling, uh, pulling the plates over to work there as well. You got a chest supported row machine, which I would consider that kind of second on the list behind the first batch of things that you get. There are lots of things you can do there. Next to hamstrings, I would say the biggest glaring weakness to new lifters coming in trying to power lift and trying to learn to max effort movement uh, and, and lift maximum weight is they have weak backs. You got weak mid backs, you got weak lats, weak traps. Chest supported row is something that you can do not just from rows, from all different neutral grip, uh, regular grip, you can also do shrugs with them, you can add chains, you can add bands, you can do a lot of different things with chest supported row to really build that back. So now you got your glute ham raise to build your hamstrings and your chest supported row to build your back and you're gonna be well on your way. Again, if you have the space, I get a dead, designated deadlift platform. I've just got four sheets of eight by eight plywood with some carpet on top to minimize the the banging and the, and the shot to the, to the floor, which is gonna reverberate throughout the entire house uh, to try and keep the noise at a minimum. It seems to work pretty well. So again, uh, those pieces of equipment and then start getting into your specialty bars. You got all kinds of different bars at EliteFTS.com. Just go look at them. You got your trap bars, your canebird bars, uh, American press bars, all kinds of different things that are gonna, that, that, that's what I would consider the things to layer then on over time to really build out your tool chest. Uh, you're gonna be able to get those different specialty items that are gonna hit your, hit the angles of the lifts and allow you to do different things. Two last things that I kind of hit on earlier would be chains and bands. 
So you want to get yourself a decent set of bands of, of basically all different sizes. And, and chains is another thing I view just like bars as something to add over time. You save your money once you get a little bit of money saved up in your, in your gym fund, get an extra couple chains. That's what I've done. I bought a couple here, a couple there over time. Now I've got 14 chains to be able to do pretty much all the work that I need there to get that kind of progressive overload in, in the lifts. Uh, as, I, as I train raw so that those carry over into the geared lifting. Okay, so as far as ordering the equipment, so I've outfitted almost everything in this gym from EliteFTS.com. I found things on there that I didn't even know existed 10 years ago. Uh, many things on there that, that are now in my home and in my gym that I use every week. Uh, going through the site and just looking at all the different accessories, all the different bars, all the, all the different strength equipment that they have. So the ordering process is pretty simple. You, you go to the site, find what you want, throw it in the cart. Um, if you're gonna do a big order or if you're confused about what all you need, if you need help with the layout, feel free to call the 800 number that's on the site. Uh, ask for Matt Goodwin in sales. He'll be able to walk you through uh, the layouts to them. He can help you with whatever you need to, with whatever confined space you have to maximize your bang for the buck. So then the ordering process, once you're ready to pull the trigger, do you do it through the site, or if you're communicating with Matt on, on a little bit larger, a little bit more personalized order, um, you just pull the trigger there. And as far as lead times, uh, you're, you're gonna be looking at anywhere from four to eight weeks, depending on what, what type of equipment you're getting. If, if it's a lot of specialty stuff, uh, that's gonna take a lot of custom work to put together, could take you in that six to eight week lead time. If, if it's more of a kind of garage line, more basic standard stuff it's probably going to be more in a four to six week time frame but just remember that everything you get whenever you order it it doesn't exist when you order it everything that the company sells from an equipment standpoint is made whenever you place the order it's custom made just for you depending on the specs that you want and, and that you're that you need to optimize your setup so people are wondering why I can't get it next day, and that's it. I mean, this, this stuff is made for you on a custom basis and then delivered to your house. From a delivery standpoint, uh, it ships uh, UPS freight usually or some, some form of freight delivery, which means you shouldn't be surprised whenever you're asked to actually be there and to receive the equipment. Uh, they're not gonna, most likely, unless you arrange ahead of time for this to happen, it's not gonna be delivered into your house and it's not gonna be assembled. It's basically gonna come on a pallet and the assembly for all, any of the equipment, I've been able to put everything together myself. I put the monolith together myself, the three by three rack I put together myself, I've taken it apart, the cable machine, everything in here I've been able to put together myself. So it's not, it's not hard to do even if you're alone, but it is going to come palletized. You're gonna have a truck with a lift gate that's gonna drop a pallet off somewhere in your driveway or out in front of your house. And it's gonna be your responsibility to get it in your garage, in your basement, wherever the ultimate place uh, where you need that equipment is gonna be, is gonna be on you to do. So just keep that in mind and, and uh, don't be surprised whenever that's part of the process. So that's about it. I appreciate you coming into my home. I appreciate you checking out my gym. From a convenience standpoint, from a quality of life standpoint, from a prioritizing, everyday activity standpoint between work, between family, everything else that people have going on in their lives who want to be serious about training and who want to be able to put in the time, I strongly urge you to, th to think about getting a home gym. It's allowed me to have the time to, to fit everything together. It's allowed me to have a strong, robust career, a strong marriage, to be raising children without any issues, without being gone. They actually get to come down and train with me and be a part of what's going on. And they get to, it's, it's an all inclusive family activity in addition to, to my personal hobby and my selfish desire to, to be a power lifter and compete. So that's all I would say. Go to EliteFTS.com, check out the equipment, lay it out in your head if you run into any problems, Give them a call at the company at the 800 number, email customer service, email sales at uh, Matt Goodwin at mgoodwin at elitefts.com and they'll be more than happy to help you out. And again, I appreciate you taking the time and talking with you today. I like the music.